Take my hands and make them as your own, and use them for your kingdom here on earth. Consecrate them to your care, anoint them for your service where you may need your gospel to be sown. Take my hands, they speak now for my heart, and by their actions they will show their love. Guard them on their daily course, be their strength and guiding force to ever serve the Trinity above. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus the Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate our Eucharist on this beautiful Tuesday morning. It's dry, it's sunny, it might be chilly, but it's a fresh one, and we come knowing that the God who looks after us is the God who gathers us in faith this morning. Let's begin by calling to mind our own sinfulness, our own brokenness. Lord Jesus, you came that we may have life and have life to the full. Lord, have mercy. And you bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ of mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us all in holiness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray now. May your grace, Lord, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. When Christ freed us, he meant us to remain free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. It is I, Paul, who tell you this. If you allow yourself to be circumcised, Christ will be of no benefit to you at all. With all solemnity, I repeat my warning. Everyone who accepts circumcision is obliged to keep the whole law. But if you do look to the law to make you justified, then you have separated yourselves from Christ and have fallen from grace. Christians are told by the Spirit to look to faith for those rewards that our righteousness hopes for, since in Christ Jesus, whether you are circumcised or not, makes no difference. What matters is faith that makes its power felt through love. The word of the Lord. Response, Lord, let your love come upon me. Let your love come upon me. Lord, let your love come upon me, the saving help of your promise. Do not take the word of truth from my mouth, for I trust in your decrees. Lord, let your love come upon me. I shall always keep your law forever and ever. I shall walk in the path of freedom, for I see your precepts. Lord, let your love come upon me. Your commands have been my delight. These I have loved. I will worship your commands and love them and ponder your statutes. Lord, let your love come upon me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus had just finished speaking when a Pharisee invited him to dine at his house. 
he went in and sat down at the table. The Pharisee saw this and was surprised that he had not first washed before the meal. But the Lord said to him, O you Pharisees, you clean the outside of cup and plate while inside yourselves you're filled with extortion and wickedness. Fools! Did not he who made the outside make the inside too? Instead, give alms from what you have, and then indeed everything will be clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. A Pharisee invites Jesus to his house for a meal and is taken aback when Jesus doesn't observe the usual Jewish rituals of washing before eating. And then Jesus accuses all the Pharisees of they're so preoccupied with the non-essentials, such as the external cleanliness, they're not paying attention to the essentials. What God would consider to be true cleanliness such as giving alms to the poor, helping those who are in need. For St. Paul in our first reading, he was very clear on focusing on what is essential. He says, what matters is faith that makes his power felt through love. You and I call to faith, call to entrust ourselves to, to Christ and to give ourselves in love as he gave himself in love on the cross. And our life of faith finds expression in how we love today. That that faith allows the love of Christ to flow through us and to touch the lives of others today. Not washing before you sit down at a meal. That's to do with the Spirit. And yet we're told, wash your hands. Wear the mask. Keep your social distance. Jesus, in coming to the Pharisee's house, didn't wash his hands. And I presume he didn't wear a mask. And he's obviously not keeping his social distance. The life of the body during pandemic, the life of the spirit, and our life in Christ and faith. The two go hand in hand. We must keep washing our hands before the meal, after the meal, and everywhere in between the meals. We must wear the mask, the mask of protection, to protect ourselves and to protect one another. But before Christ, we don't wear a mask. Because before Christ we come as we are. We don't hide behind the mask. Because Christ sees behind the mask. He knows what's in our hearts. Keeping our social distance. Whether it be in church or in the shops or in the bus or wherever. Keeping our social distance. But we don't keep our distance from Christ. Christ is right with us. Christ walks with us today. And he washes not only our hands today, but he washes our hearts. He washes our hearts so that we can love in purity today. So that we can love with his love, with his pure gift of love. Our faith expresses itself in the love we have for each other and how we touch the lives of those who especially are in need, those who cry out for help today.
Let us now bring all our prayers to the Father in faith and in hope. Let us pray for each other that we may always respect each other, protect each other through the wearing of the mask and washing our hands and keeping socially distant, that we may respect each other's space. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all those in government, all those who would make decisions, that they would make wise decisions, that they will speak the truth, that they will always seek the common good, that they will act with justice, respecting the dignity of every man, woman, and child. Lord, hear us. Let's pray for all those who are sick, all those who are lonely, all those who feel isolated and alone and afraid and anxious and worried. Let us pray God's blessing on them. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all our young people, that they may be kept safe, that they may grow in wisdom and in love. Lord, hear us. We pray for our dead, those who have died recently especially, all those whose anniversaries occur around this time. We entrust them all to the merciful love of the Father. Lord, hear us. Father, these are our prayers. There are many others we have in the silence of our own hearts. We entrust them to your love and mercy, for we ask them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Friends, let us pray that our sacrifice this morning may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In you we live and move and have our being, and while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. Having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we now acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. We ask that sharing the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love together with Francis, our Pope, Noel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles, St. Anne, and all the saints who pleased you down to ages, that we may merit to be co to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine confidence, we can now pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, deliver us from everything that is evil. Grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from every distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter onto my roof, but only say the word and my soul should be healed. rich suffer want and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no blessing.
My Jesus, I believe that you're truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise, all thanksgiving, be every moment thine. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you and keep you all safe today, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. And have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Immortal, invisible God, only wise, enlightened, accessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thy rulest in might. Thy justice, like mountains, high soaring above, Thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love.